Let's investigate some useful commutators involving the ladder operators and the number operator. First, I'm going to derive a general result. And this is a general result that links together three different operators. So let's say we have some three operators. I'm going to call them A, B, and C. If we take the commutator of the product of A and B with C, that's going to give us something useful that we're going to use in a derivation later in this video. So first, I want to find a useful expression for this. So here, we're taking the product of two operators, A and B. And then we're taking the commutator of that product with C. So all of these guys have hats on top, so they are operators in quantum mechanics. So I'm going to write this out using the definition of a commutator. So first, we're going to have A, B, and then C. So we have A, B, and then we're acting on with C. And then we're going to have C and then AB. So we're going to subtract off C and then AB. So can you see that we can group this together? We can group this AB together. And we can group this AB together. And I'm going to put hats on all of these guys to, to denote that these guys are operators. So here AB comes first, and then we have C. And over here C comes first and then we have AB. So this is the definition. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a very sneaky little term. And this sneaky term is going to allow us to do some algebraic manipulation. So I'm going to rewrite this in a slightly different form. We're still going to have these two terms. We're still going to have A, B, C. But I'm going to insert another term. I'm going to insert the term A, C, B. And I'm going to subtract it over here, and I'm going to add it over here. Because if I subtract something, I have to add it to make sure that I'm not changing this side of the equation. I'm effectively adding 0, and 0 is the additive identity. So I have A, C, B. And then I still have to subtract off this guy over here, C, A, B. So I'm subtracting off C, A, B. And now I'm going to do some interesting grouping over here. So over here, we, we grouped together A and B, because that's how it came in the definition of this commutator. But I can use associativity. That's the property of associativity. And I can group these guys in a different way. I can group B and C together. And I can group C and B together over here. I'm going to put hats on all of these guys as well. So we have hats everywhere. You don't have to put the hats. But I think it's a good habit to get into so we can distinguish the operators from numerical coefficients. And I'm going to put some hats over here as well. And I'm also going to put some interesting brackets over here. I'm going to group AC together, and I'm going to group CA together. So have a look at this grouping that I have chosen to do. I've chosen to keep A on the left-hand side over here and group these other terms. And I've chosen to keep B on the right-hand side and group these remaining terms. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these terms together. I'm going to take these guys together, and I'm going to take these guys together. And with this grouping, I can actually write this. I can factor out these guys. So I'm going to write it explicitly so you can see what's happening over here. So this is going to be equal to, first we're going to have A. I'm going to factor out A. I'm going to open the brackets, and now I'm going to have B, C, minus C, B. And I'll put hats on top of all of these guys. We have BC minus CB. And I'm going to add to that plus, I have some brackets, AC minus CA. So I have AC minus CA. And I'll put some hats as well. And we have to factor on the right hand side, so we have to put B over here. Now, I can't move these guys around because, in general, these operators are not commutative. If you were just working with real numbers and you had a number on the right-hand side, you'd be free to swap it. You could put it on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side. But here we have to be careful. We have to keep the order consistent. So here's what we have. We've grouped these guys together. We can see that BC minus CB can be found over here if we factor out A. And if we factor out B from the right-hand side, we can get AC 
minus CA. And look at these two combinations over here. These have the same form as a commutator. So we can write these two guys as a commutator. So I'm going to write this as A times the commutator of B and C. So I've got the commutator of B and C. And then I'm going to add to that the commutator of A and C. So I have A and C. And then finally, I'm going to have B over here. So B is on the right hand side. So that's B there, and that's A there. So we've just written this guy as the commutator of B and C, and this guy is the commutator of A and C. This is the relationship that I wanted to derive. If we have something of this form, where we have a product, and we're taking the commutator of this product of operators with another operator, we can expand that out using this. And over here we have simple commutators. These are commutators just involving two operators, whereas over here we have three operators together. There's alternative forms over here. If you swap the order of these guys, you're going to introduce a minus sign. And you can also swap the order of these guys, and you'll get a minus sign from both of them. Then you can uh, actually eliminate that minus sign of both sides of the equation, and you can get an alternative expression where the product is in the right-hand side over here, and not in the left-hand side of the commutator. So this is what I'm going to use now. So the next thing that I want to look at is the number operator. So the number operator, I'm going to write it as capital N with a little hat. This is defined to be a dagger times a. And these are the ladder operators that we've been looking at in the previous few videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. So this is the Hermitian adjoint of a. That's what the dagger denotes. We're taking the Hermitian adjoint. And what I want to show you is that this number operator is Hermitian. These guys are not Hermitian. The ladder operators are not Hermitian operators. But they're still very useful in quantum mechanics. Position and momentum are an alternative way to think of these systems. But if we can actually switch to these ladder operators, we can find far more simple explanations for the quantum harmonic oscillator. So that's where this pops up. It also pops up in other applications in quantum mechanics. So what I want to do is I want to take the Hermitian adjoint or the Hermitian conjugate of both sides of this equation. So this is just a definition. This is what the number operator is defined to be. What I'm going to do is I'll put some brackets around here. And I'm going to write a little dagger at the top. So this is telling me that I'm taking the Hermitian adjoint of this. And then I'm going to put some brackets around this guy. I'm going to put the Hermitian adjoint up here. Now, if I have a product, I'm taking the Hermitian adjoint, I actually have to swap the order when I distribute this dagger inside. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to swap the order and apply the dagger individually. So this A on the right is going to go to the left, and I'm going to have to put a dagger on here. So that's this one over here. And now this one on the left is going to get put on the right, and I'm going to have to, I'll put some brackets so we avoid confusion. This is A dagger, and it's getting another dagger. So we've got two daggers acting on this A. And these daggers are actually going to undo each other. So from complex numbers, we know that if we take the complex conjugate twice, we actually get back to where we started. So you take the complex conjugate once, and then again, and then you're back to where you were. So because the complex conjugate takes all the i's to minus i. And then if we do that twice, we get i goes to minus i, and minus i goes to i. So that's why we go back to where we began. So now what we can do is we can just write this as a dagger times a. So this a is over here. These two daggers eliminate each other. And this is the same as n. This is by definition n. So what do we have? We have found that this n over here, when we take the dagger of n, we get n. So that means, I'll write this as a summary over here, n is equal to n dagger. And this means that it's Hermitian. So this guy is Hermitian, and that means it actually corresponds to a measurable quantity. And this actually tells you the number of the energy level for the quantum harmonic oscillator. So it just gives you an integer. It gives you a number, and that number tells you which energy level you're sitting on uh, for a particular state. So this is a very useful operator that we're going to be using in later videos. So this is going to give you something that you can actually measure. It's a, it's a real value. The eigenvalues of this are going to be real values, because this is Hermitian. But these guys are not going to give you that. But they will allow you to do other things to states. 
they're going to allow you to raise and lower the energy levels. That's why these guys are sometimes called the raising and lowering operators or the creation and annihilation operators. So this line over here has proven that the number operator is Hermitian. Now what I want to do is I want to take the commutator of the number operator with these ladder operators. So I'm going to do that underneath. So let's do uh, this commutator first. So we'll take the commutator of n, there's a little hat on top because it's an operator, with a. Let's do a first. Now we can write out the definition. So the definition tells us that we have a dagger a, that's equivalent to n, and then we're taking the commutator with a. Now what is that going to be equal to? Let's have a look. We have something of this form up here. This is why I went to the trouble of deriving this general result. So for any general operators a, b, and c, this holds. And now we're just going to apply these, these guys, we're going to use this, and we're going to uh, actually evoke this general result. So this is going to be the same as a, this is going to be the same as b, and this is going to be the same as c. So we've got a first, second, and third operator. So this general result tells us that we have to put the first one over here. So that, in this case, is a dagger. And then we have to take the commutator of the second and the third. That's b and c. We have to take the commutator of these guys. So we're going to have the commutator of a with a. And then we have to add to that the commutator of the first and the third. So we have the first and the third. We've got the commutator of a dagger with a. And then finally, we have to uh, multiply by the second one, which is b. And the second one is this one over here. So that's a. So now, well, what have we done? We have written this in an alternative form. So we can see that this is the first one, this is the second one, and this is the third one. And now over here, we have the first and the third. And then finally, this is the middle one. This is the second one. So let's have a look at these two commutators. This commutator is a with itself. And the commutator of an operator with itself is equal to 0. That's because an operator commutes with itself. And that's a fundamental property. If you were to substitute it into uh, one of these commutator relations, you'd have a times a minus a times a. And that actually doesn't matter. If you square an operator, the order doesn't matter. So let's have a look at this one. Here, these guys are not the same. And if they're different, then we have to be more careful. So we have a dagger and a. And we know what this is. This is the commutation relation I derived in the previous video in the quantum mechanics playlist. This is actually equal to minus 1. So this is equal to minus 1. This is analogous to the canonical commutation relation uh, that links position and momentum together. So here we get 0, so this term disappears, and here we get minus 1. So we just have minus 1 multiplying a. So here we get minus a with a hat. So that is what this commutator is equal to. And now I'm going to do uh, another commutator that is analogous to this one. I'm going to do n with a dagger. So let's have a look at n with a dagger. I'll do that underneath. So we're going to have n with a dagger. And this is going to be equal to a dagger times a. I'm going to take the commutator with a dagger. We have a dagger over here. So the only difference between these two is that we have an extra dagger on this term. So now let's write this out using the general result from above. So we're going to have the first, second, and the third. So I'm going to write the first is a dagger. And then we take the commutator of the second and the third, which is these two over here. So that's a with a dagger. And then we're going to add to that the commutator of the first and the third. So that's this one and this one. That's actually the same one. It's a dagger with a dagger. So we have a dagger with a dagger. And finally, we're going to multiply by the second one. That's this b over here. So the second one is the one in the middle. That's a. So we have a with a hat on top. And let's have a look at these two commutators. This is the same one. We have a dagger with a dagger. So that's going to give 0. And over here, we have a with a dagger. That is the opposite of this commutator, right? We're just swapping the order. And commutators are anti-symmetric. So here we're going to get plus 1, not minus 1. So this is plus 1. And plus 1 is going to multiply a dagger. And this term is going to disappear because we're multiplying by 0. So we're going to be left with 
a dagger. So this is a dagger, and this is minus a. So minus a over here, and plus a dagger. So these are very important relationships. I'm going to write them down in red because they're very important, and we're going to keep using them again and again in quantum mechanics, especially when we're solving the quantum harmonic oscillator. So we have this canonical relationship. It's an analogous canonical relationship. So we have a and a dagger, that's one. Then we also have the commutator of n with a. And what is that? Well, we know that from up here. That's equal to minus a. And then finally, this one that we found over here, we have n. We're taking the commutator with a dagger, and that's equal to plus a dagger. So the difference here is a sign. So we have minus over here, and here we have plus. So that sign difference comes from the ordering of these commutators here. And those are actually, uh, they, they come from this commutator relationship. So I derived this in a previous video, and I also derived the canonical commutation relationship in a previous video too. So these are the takeaway messages of this video. These are the commutators that we're going to keep evoking when we study the harmonic oscillator and also other systems in quantum mechanics that are related to the quantum harmonic oscillator. So one of the most important things to remember is that operators in quantum mechanics don't necessarily commute. Sometimes they do commute. Sometimes you have lucky cases where operators can be swapped around, but in general, they don't commute. And this non-commuting nature of operators in quantum mechanics actually gives rise to a lot of the useful properties uh, that we, we, just, we uh, observe in quantum mechanics. So we're going to be using these commutation relations later in the quantum mechanics playlist. If you want to watch other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist, you can click over here.